Hi, and welcome back to Becca's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you my easy, gluten-free, and healthy angel food cake recipe. Whether you buy regular or gluten-free varieties of angel food cake mix in the store, you're also going to get a lot of sugar and a lot of ingredients that you don't need. So I prefer to make mine at home with ingredients that I know and I can also make it sugar free because of the substitutions that I use. So let's go through the ingredients and I'll show you how to make it. So the first thing we're going to need are 12 large eggs. Now for this particular recipe we're only going to use the egg whites and you can save the yolks to make a hollandaise sauce, scramble up some eggs or something like that, but for this we're only going to use the egg whites. Next we need a full cup of sugar and I've chosen to use a half a cup of the xylitol and a half a cup of the palm sugar that I like so much. This will give it a little bit of a brownish tint but if you don't mind it doesn't matter. <laughs> Next we're going to need one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar and we have one tablespoon of vanilla extract, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, and then for this gluten-free variety, I have a half of a cup of arrowroot starch and a half of a cup of brown rice flour. So now I'm going to show you how to put the egg whites in our KitchenAid mixer and we'll whip them up and get this started. Okay, this is just a quick and easy way to separate your egg whites. Just crack it open as you normally would and then hold half of it like this and just go back and forth until you get all of the egg whites out and then you just do that with the rest of them and have a container beside so that you can put your yolks aside. Okay so we have uh, almost all of our egg whites here. My husband actually just showed me a really easy and interesting way to take the yolks out of, your, out of the whites. Um, and if we had done that, we wouldn't have the uh, little bit of yolk that you see here. But there's, uh, there's just a little bit, so it should be absolutely fine. I'm just going to put our last yolk in here. Sorry, our last egg white. We don't want the yolk. And then I'm going to put on my whisk attachment. And we're going to whip these until they're foamy. So it'll be a few minutes here. We just whip them really good with our mixer. If you have a hand mixer, you can use that as well. Uh, but this is obviously going to do your job really fast. Okay, so these have whipped for probably two to three minutes at this point. And as you can see, they've gotten a little bit foamy. So now we're just going to put in our cream of tartar. And let it mix for another minute or two. And then we'll add the sugars. Okay, I just want to stop it here for a minute and show you what they're supposed to look like. We're definitely getting the softer peaks here, starting to get a little bit firm, so we're going to turn this back on, and we're going to add our sugars a little bit of, at a time. So I'll start with that one and let that mix in really well. And then I'll add the xylitol. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's run another couple of minutes and then it will be nice firm peaks and then we'll mix in the vanilla. Okay, so we've let it run for I would say a good three to four minutes. And as you can see now we have a nice stiff peak. That is not moving at all. So now, now that we have this fluffy egg white mixture, we are not going to want to deflate it. So I'm just going to try to clean this off the best that I can. I'm gonna pour in our teaspoon of vanilla. And what I'm gonna do is just fold it in, fold it in gently so we don't lose all of the air that we've just put into it by whisking it. And then little by little, we're going to pour in 
our flour mixture that we mixed up earlier. Just a little bit at a time and then we're going to fold it in. So you want to take your time with this step so that you have a nice fluffy light cake in the end. I've mixed in all of the flour mixture at this point, and as you can see, we have a beautiful cloud of cake batter right here. Remember to take your time and fold it in with a whisk so that you don't lose all the work that you just did with your KitchenAid mixer. I preheated the oven to 325 degrees, and then I just greased my angel food cake pan with a little olive oil and sprinkled it with a little extra brown rice flour. Now we're just going to spread it evenly through. Again, very careful just to keep it uh, in that nice texture. And then if you need to, before you put it in the oven, just take a butter knife and just run it through it a little bit to try to get some of the air bubbles out. That's not uh, it's not something that you absolutely have to do. It's going to turn out really, really nicely. But it's definitely helpful to know what it looks like. Um, we did have a little bit of egg yolk in one of the batches that we did, and it did not turn out like this. So I highly recommend that you make sure there are no yolks in your mixture. All you want are the egg whites, and you're going to come out with a really, really nice result. Okay, so we just carefully spread it around and we're going to put this in the oven for 50 to 55 minutes. You always want to overcook a angel food cake. You definitely don't want to undercook it. So err on the side of closer to an hour when you're baking an angel food cake. Okay, our angel food cake has been in the oven for the full 55 minutes. And if you touch it, you see that it springs right back. So it uh, looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is turn it upside down onto this cup. And we're going to let it cool for about 10 minutes before we try to take it out of the pan. Okay, so the 10 minutes were up. And what I did is I took the cake turned it on the bottom and I just used a butter knife to loosen the sides and the inside of the pan. Then I flipped it back over onto a plate and it lifts off really nicely. Then what I did with the same knife is I just slowly cut around here and it just fell off onto the plate like so. Now you can use this for strawberry shortcake, for anything that you would use an angel food cake for. But this one in particular, I am going to use to make the berry custard trifle that I make every year for my husband on his birthday. So I'm just going to cut into it here just so that you can see what it looks like on the inside. And then we'll come back for our very special taste test time. It's taste test time. So I mentioned that we have a very special taste test time today, and we are surrounded by wonderful friends and family mm -hmm. for my yeah. husband's 39th <laughs> birthday, and we are going to divvy up our delicious gluten-free trifle and see how it goes over. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. Aww. Everyone's got their bowl of trifles, so let's start with the birthday boy. That's gluten free. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Try it, Doug. Mm. Oh, oh yes. Gluten. That is amazing. <laughs> that is delicious. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great, too. Very good. That's great, that. Oh. So fresh. so fresh, so good, man! I am telling you, that is what I'm talking about right there for gluten-free, baby. <laughs> mm. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.